Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And hi, my name is Ikhlas And I'm the representative from group PPL19 and 20 And I'll be presenting about a topic on DNA vaccine The background of DNA vaccine So basically there are four main components about this topic uh, Which are the types of vaccine The DNA vaccine What is it used for And also how are these DNA vaccine are made Okay, let's start with the first component of the topic about the types of vaccine. So how many types of vaccines are there currently available? Vaccine can be classified into four main types and these include live attenuated vaccine, inactivated vaccine, toxoid vaccine and subunit vaccine. So let's start with the live attenuated vaccine first. So this type of vaccine are derived from disease producing virus or bacteria that has been weakened through chemical or physical processes. So these weakened pathogen are introduced to the body where they are allowed to replicate and the body will produce a response against it without causing any illness. And it to remember this immune response to a live attenuated vaccine is virtually identical to the one that is produced by natural infection and next is the inactivated vaccine so inactivated vaccine is a vaccine consists of virus particles bacteria or other pathogens that have been ruined in culture and then lose their disease producing capacity so after the introduction of the vaccine the antigen cannot replicate or grow in human so it is safe to use on impaired immune system response percent and need to remember it is not as strong as live vaccines so it needs several doses over time in order to get immunity against the disease next is the toxic vaccine so toxic vaccine are produced based on the toxin produced by certain bacteria for example tetanus or diphtheria and need to remember toxoids are altered form of toxin and they are not secreted by the bacteria itself so the toxoid is an inactivated toxin whose toxicity has been suppressed while its immunogenicity, immunogenicity maintained uh, in other words they will not produce any symptoms of the disease but the immune response will be elicited by the action of the toxin which act as the antigen and usually the toxoid vaccine will be administered together with the aluminium or calcium salt which serve as adjuvant in order to increase the immune response and lastly it is subunit vaccine a subunit vaccine is a fragment of a pathogen that is used to trigger an immune response and stimulate acquired, acquired immunity against the pathogen from which it is derived subunit vaccine can be further categorized into protein based vaccine which use specific isolated protein of the pathogen polysaccharide vaccine which create a response against the molecules in the pathogen's capsule and also conjugate subunit vaccine which binds the polysaccharide to a carrier protein that can induce a long term protective response even in infant and need to remember the immune response will be elicited but there is no guarantee that immunological memory will be formed in the correct manner. Moving on to the next component of the topic, which is about the DNA vaccine. What are DNA vaccine? For over a hundred years, vaccination has been affected by either introducing live attenuated infectious agents or introducing specific antigens which immune response act against it directly but now new approach to vaccination has been developed where it involves the direct introduction of a plasmid containing the DNA sequence including the antigen and this approach is called DNA vaccine and this approach offers a number of potential advantages over traditional approaches including the stimulation of both humoral and cell mediated immunity improve vaccine stability and the relative ease of large-scale manufacture 
Next is about the function of the DNA vaccine. What is it used for? DNA vaccine is used to prevent infection and severe outcomes caused by pathogens. Okay, it helps the body to stimulate the generation of cell mediated immunity in order to against the antigen. It contains nucleotides encoding an antigenic portion such as pathogen core region or amyloid region. And this type of vaccination is especially important for people at higher risk of disease complication such as elderly. There are a few examples of vaccination used as a prevention or treatment of diseases and this include HIV vaccine, HPV vaccine and influenza vaccine. In addition to what I've mentioned earlier, there are other several advantages of, the, of DNA vaccination and this include um, their benefit as long-term persistence of immunogen and they are simpler to produce and also stores which cost effective and they appear to be safer, more stable and easy to handle. Let's move to the last component of the topic which is about the how are these DNA vaccines are made. DNA vaccines are produced by DNA cloning using plasmid vector. There are four major steps involved in the production of DNA vaccine. So first, we need to digest both vector and the foreign DNA to be inserted with one same restriction enzyme. Next, we need to mix the vector DNA and the foreign DNA and join them together using DNA ligase, which results in formation of novel combination of DNA molecules, or we call them as recombinant DNA. And next, we need to transform and transfer this new plasmid or recombinant DNA into a suitable bacteria whose cell usually we use E. coli. And lastly, we need to grow the DNA on agar plates with selection for antibiotic resistant in order to select bacteria cells that contain plasmids. So this is the last slide of the topic where I will summarize about this DNA vaccine. The DNA vaccine is introduced into the body and allowed to enter the cells within appropriate tissue. And next, there will be transcription and translation of the protein product encoded by the gene. And this protein is an antigen from the organism against which antibody production is desired. And lastly, the host then will generate an immune response to the antigen, generating protection for the host. Okay, so that is the end of my presentation. Thank you.